Well, thank you, Sandy. Um, and thank you to all of you for coming out and supporting our science here. Um, so we are starting with the flu season. Um, it's October, November. So who of you had their flu shots already? Well, very good. I'm really impressed. I hope the rest of you will take example and get it soon. Although we all know that um, some of us will eventually come down with flu-like symptoms. Um, and uh, we will, especially at the beginning, not know whether it's really the flu uh, or if it's another cold that we have caught, um, you know, caused by other viruses. Um, but it would be good to know if it's the flu because we know that the flu is serious and we should see a doctor. It would also be good because there's actually a drug against the flu that we can take very early. And when we take it very early, we can actually help making the disease less severe. Wouldn't it be great to not worry about um, whether it's the flu or whether it's another virus that we have and just take a pill against our flu-like symptoms and hit all of them, the, you know, the viruses that cause the common cold, the influenza viruses that cause the, the flu, and, and not to worry um, uh, exactly what virus we are dealing with. And the same thing is with bacteria and viruses. We all know about sore throats. They also will come pretty soon now in the next few months. And we will not know whether we will have a strep throat um, caused by a bacteria or whether we have a viral infection. But we very well know that if we have a strep throat, we should take antibiotics. And we also know if we have a viral um, sore throat, we should not take antibiotics because that will actually make resistance development um, among the bacteria much more severe. So again, wouldn't it be great if we don't have to worry about is it a streptococcus or if it's another virus that is actually causing our symptoms, but just be able to take one pill and, um, and, and help with um, you know, our symptoms and make it better. Now, we here at Gladstone think it would be great, um, not only because it's convenient for you and us to have only one pill and not to worry about it, but we also think that it makes scientific sense. And I will come back to this actually at the end of my very short presentation. So the approach that we are taking here at Gladstone is that we are not going after each individual virus and bacteria to try to develop a um, you know, drug against it. What we're doing is we focus instead on the response um, in our body that actually these pathogens evoke when they come and infect us. And it's actually not so easy for a, for a pathogen to set up shop in our body and to you know, cause an infection and make, it really, make us really go sick. There's millions of alarm bells ringing when these pathogens are coming close to us and starting to invade us. And this is not only the, all the immune cells that are you know, you know, directed Im directly to, to attack any infected cell or any bacteria that is around. In each of our cells that compose our body, there is actually a program, so there are programs hardwired in that are just dedicated to sensing um, you know, pathogens that are coming in and then triggering defense mechanisms. And these are usually suicide mechanisms that lead to the killing of that cell. Now, the pathogens are also not, you know, very, they're not bad. They actually have evolved to circumvent all these um, alarm mechanisms with more or less success. Um, and they either sort of try to circumvent these defense mechanisms or they try to inactivate them or they try to actually to hijack them so that they help their own replication and not really do their job in defending. So it is a very complicated and complex interaction between the pathogens and our body that, that, that leads eventually to an um, infection. And what we're doing here at Gladstone is that we're trying to unravel comprehensively this complicated network um, of interactions that are occurring. 
So what we're doing is we're expressing thousands of proteins, viral and bacterial <coughs> proteins. We study and study with what cellular factors or host proteins these viral proteins come into contact. So usually one protein interacts with tens or hundreds of our own proteins. So we're dealing with hundreds of thousands of interactions from which we extract those common pathways that are actually common to multiple infections, bacterial or viral. And then we study whether these pathways are important for the, for the infection, um, so we should actually inactivate them with a, with a drug or a cure, or whether these are actually defense mechanisms that we could strengthen so that they could work better against multiple bacteria or viruses. And using this approach, we have confirmed already, also we are still in the process of doing this, um, the, the, that, uh, no, that pathways that should be involved are actually coming out in our analysis. And we can now determine which of the viruses and bacteria we're studying are actually uh, depending on these pathways. But we're also discovering a lot of new and unexpected pathways in our body that before have not been brought into contact with pathogens. For example, we recently identified a genomic surveillance pathway that was previously only known to target our own <coughs> genome um, you know, integrity to make sure that um, our genetic information is correctly translated into proteins and not can, uh, not, is not mutated and can cause cancer or something else. So we have found out that that surveillance pathway is also very effective against uh, uh, genomes that are incoming from pathogen and can recognize those and lead to a very effective defense mechanism. And we have identified groups of viruses that defend, that actually are targeted by these genomic surveillance pathway. And among these is the Zika virus that I'm, I'm sure you all have heard about. Now, Zika is uh, interesting because Zika has evolved a mechanism to inactivate this pathway in order to set up shop successfully in, in our body. Um, by inactivating this pathway, uh, it not only allows itself to replicate, it also harms our body because that genomic pathway is very important for us. And it's not only important for cancer development, we find that it is also important um, for microcephaly development in, develop in developing brains. So I think our approach currently is very ambitious and it's very risky. And, um, um, drug companies um, um, normally shy away from such an approach because it's a little bit like finding the needle in the haystack. An argument is also that by targeting not the pathogen, but actually targeting our own body, we risk to have more side effects uh, by generating a drug, and that might be right. However, we think that the advantage that comes with this approach is equally important, because by targeting not the pathogen, but targeting the, the, our, own, our own body, um, the pathogen cannot develop any resistance. Um, so we're not, we, we're dealing or we're having a, actually an angle on the growing resistance problem that we have currently with antibiotics. We, this is not, resistance is not only an issue with antibiotics, it's also important with antivirals. Um, I'm sure you all have heard about the hepatitis C drugs that are so effective but also very expensive. Um, the reason, or one reason why they are very expensive is because they're not only composed of one drug, they're composed of two or three drugs at the same time because if we only use one drug, the virus would develop a resistance immediately. Another advantage that we see in this approach is that we don't really need, if, we, if we're dealing with an emerging um, epidemic, an unknown virus that is going to come uh, or here or somewhere else, we would not have to wait until we have all the last characteristics of this, um, of this pathogen. We have actually, an, we would have an arsenal of drugs that would um, be effective against multiple of these pathogens and we would have a bad, much better handle on these emerging infections. And as a last point, I want to point out that it's just an, an enormous um, you know, advantage in basic right, uh, research advan uh, advance that we will we were gain out of this approach. Not only will we understand better how pathogens are going to interact with our body, we think that we will actually get a lot of information out of it that is also relevant for other diseases, like cancer or neurological or cardiac diseases that we will hear, hear about in a minute. Because many of those um, you know, involve chronic inflammatory conditions, 
um, which is basically a, um, a condition that starts potentially with an interaction between a pathogen and, a, um, and, 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 and our body, and then the defense mechanism can get out of control. So by understanding better how these mechanisms work, I think we will also contribute to other diseases. Thank you.